Hello, welcome back. This is our third module. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, how to provide accurate allergen information for prepacked and non prepacked food. Now, the way allergen information must be provided for prepacked and non prepacked food is completely different. Now, the objectives of this module will be to explain how to provide allergen information to consumers, both for non-prepacked and prepacked food. Now, after working through this module, uh, you'll be able to explain how allergen information for non-prepacked food must be communicated to consumers, uh, and explain how allergen information for prepacked food must be communicated to consumer. Now, requirement for non-prepacked food. Businesses have some flexibility in how they can provide allergen information for non-prepacked food to consumers. Allergen information may be provided by any means the FBO chooses, for example, by having the information written up front. Uh, example on the menu or menu board so the consumer doesn't have to ask for the information so it's always important that if inf the information is there available for the customer to see it signposting the consumers to where written information can be found signposting the consumers to obtain oral information from a member of staff now, where allergen information will be provided orally, there must be a label or ticket attached to the food or a clearly displayed sign or notice informing the customer about how the information will be provided. Now, if the information on allergens is provided orally, the FBO must put a system in place to ensure its accuracy. Now, this means the FBO must have a process in place to capture information from recipes or ingredients list from product bought in and make this available to staff so that, you know, the staff uh, have information uh, in place just in case a customer asks. For example, recipes or ingredients list could be kept in a folder uh, with allergens highlighted. Now, if ingredients, menus, or recipes change, the owner should or the manager should make sure they update the list of ingredients with allergens as well. Now, the FBO could use an allergen chart to help the team keep track of dishes and the allergens they contain or a chef recipe card for recipe substitutions or occasional specials. Now it is very important that consumers with food allergies or intolerances can make safe and informed choices when selecting their food. This is very important. Any staff who are saving customers should know the potential risks to, to customers' health if they provide them with incorrect allergen information. Let me say that again. Any staff who are saving customers should know the potential risks to customers' health if they provide them with incorrect allergen information. Now, if a member of staff is unsure of the answer to a customer's question, they should never guess and must ask somebody who knows. Please do not guess. This is people's life. Now, customers are strongly advised to speak to staff regarding their allergy requirement. For instance, they should ask how the food is handled and cooked and whether there is a chance of cross-contamination from cooking uh, equipment or ingredients. Be very clear about their dietary requirement and give examples of the food that make them heal. 
So please, if you are a customer, you're not sure, you've got to make sure that you insist so that they provide correct and enough information. Remember, it's all about your health. Okay, reminder. Now, this we spoke about in module two. Now, you've got to understand that from 1st October, that was in 2021, all food that are pre-packed for direct sale, PPDS, must have on the package or on the label attached to the package. The name of the food and ingredients list including allergenic ingredients. Now, the allergenic ingredients within the food must be emphasized every time they appear in the ingredients list. For example, the allergens in the food can be listed in bold, in contrasting colors, or underlined. Now, what are the requirements for pre-packed food? Now, depending on the product, some or all of the following information will be required on the label. The name of the food, list of ingredients, ingredients or processing aid causing allergies or intolerances that are stated in the 14 allergens, quantity of certain ingredients or categories of ingredients, net quantity of the food, date of minimum durability or the use by dates, special storage conditions and or conditions of use, name of business name and address of FBO, the quantity of certain ingredients or categories of ingredients, net quantity of the food, date of minimum durability of the use by date, special storage conditions, and or conditions of use, name or business name and address of the foodness, a food business owner. Now, how to label allergens on prepacked products? The allergenic ingredients need to be emphasized using a typeset that clearly distinguishes them from the rest of the ingredients. For example, by means of the font, style, or background color, food businesses can choose, can choose what method they want to use to emphasize the 14 allergens on their product label. The allergenic ingredients also need to be indicated with a clear reference to the allergens as listed in Annex 2 of Regulation EU number 11692011 EUFIC. For example, prawns, crustaceans, or cod fish where several ingredients or processing aids in a food originate from a single allergenic ingredient, the labeling should make this clear for each ingredient or processing aid concerned, for example, cold fish. Now, the food product without an ingredient list. Some food such as alcoholic drinks with more than 1.2% by volume of alcohol do not require an ingredient list, Article 16.4 of EU FIC. In this case, any substances or product derived from the annex to a list which are present and not clear from the name of the food need to be listed using a content statement followed by the name of the allergens. For example, a bottle of wine must have a statement such as contains sulfite. If the finished product contains sulfite at more than 10 mg per kilo or 10 mg per liter, now, applicable requirement, voluntary information, Article 36. Article 36 of the EU FIC covers the applicable requirement 
for voluntary food information and the implementing measures that the European Commission need to take on the application of the requirement. In particular, the EU FIC does not permit the voluntary use of allergen advisory statements such as contains wheat, egg, and milk to repeat mandatory allergen ingredient information. This is relevant where an ingredient list is not required but is voluntarily provided. This has come to the end of our module 3. So next, we're going to be testing you. So what we call knowledge a check. Now, in this knowledge check, we have about six questions. The first one will be, number one, the smell of peanut butter will cause an allergic reaction in people with peanut allergies. Is it true or false? Number two, select one of the most common food associated with a food allergy. A, not. B, chicken. C, fish. So you've got to, so you've got to select the correct answer. Number three, one of the requirements of prepacked food are select more than one answer the manufacturer's name and address the producer's name the list of ingredients and the name of the food number four how many uk major allergens are there a 12 b 7 c 9 d 14 number five in the uk are food allergies more common in children or adults? A. Most common in children. B. Most common in adults. 6. You've got to choose the correct statement. Food businesses can choose what method they want to use to emphasize the 14 allergens on their product label. B. Food business can only declare allergic information to customers depending on the type of food okay so choose the correct answers and make sure you send them to the email provided at the bottom of this module thank you very much and i'll see you in our next module